Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 31st. First up, this was sent to me from 1954 Shadow. Bob, thank you. And this is from the DailyMail.com. Can you solve one of the world's biggest UFO mysteries? Rare microfilms of alien sightings are now available online for free. Actually, the site that they link to here has all kinds of unclassified government documents, but this article is specifically about the Project Blue Book, which ended in 1970 with around 12,000 UFO encounters dealt with. And uh, there's still about 5.5% of them, or 701, left to be solved. So if you would like to peruse the uh, files and take a look at them yourselves, I'll put a link down below because the links that they say take you to Project Blue Book actually just take you to the general site, and you have to slog through all kinds of classified documents to be able to get to these. So um, I will have the link to this article, which gives you the link to the site, and then I will put the link down below to take you directly to the Project Blue Book files if you're interested in exploring the UFO sightings a little bit more. But um, that's kind of cool that more and more stuff is being released, although as old as it is, I wish they would release stuff a little bit faster. But uh, still cool that we get to actually see what's going on here. And next up, this is from the Associated Press. Cuban youth built secret computer network despite Wi-Fi ban. Um, the country of Cuba is basically isolated from the Internet. If you notice, if you explore on Facebook or YouTube, you do not see a lot of content coming from Cuba because those people have to pay a fortune even to get online if they can even get permission to get online. So for your average Cuban person, not to mention the fact that it costs about a quarter of a month's salary to get on the Internet if you even are allowed. So what they've decided to do is take about... Um, take all kinds of uh, small equipment like Wi-Fi and even stringy Ethernet cables across the island to various places and hook up about 9,000 people on their own private little intranet in Cuba. And although this is not something that's secret from the authorities, as long as they self-police and seem to be keeping themselves away from any kind of government criticism and also no uh, posting of any kind of pornography, the government kind of turns a blind eye. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, I think the government probably uses this even as a spying tool. seems to be for the young kids the favorite um, thing to do is get together for uh, social activities using the Internet to communicate and play U.S. type of combat war games. That seems to be very popular with the Cuban youth. Next up, this is from CNET, Pirate Bay Backup After December Police Raid. A few weeks back, I talked about the fact that ISOHunt had put up a mirror of the Pirate Bay, so for all intents and purposes, Pirate Bay never was down for too long because ISOHunt mirrored them, but now the actual Pirate Bay, still under the .se domain name, is back up and functioning, and they've warned the authorities that no matter how much they try to shut them down, they will pop up again, so evidently they have backup servers all over the world, and... Uh, I suppose if they want to get really, really uh, sneaky about it, what are you going to do if they uh, pay for servers in places like uh, maybe Palestine or Pakistan or places like that to where we have uh, you know, groups of people that are uh, probably not going to let any kind of police force in to enforce any kind of laws, especially if they're getting money for it. So, yeah, you keep trying to uh, shut the Pirate Bay down, but uh, it just is not going to work. It's, if it wants to stay up, it's going to stay up. I think it's a lot, a lot of waste of taxpayers' time and money. And last up, would you like a piece of $400 software pretty much for free? Well, it is actually for free. Google Earth Pro, um, regular Google Earth a lot of people use, but uh, if you could switch to Google Earth Pro right now, and uh, I think it's just being made free from, from now on. It used to be something that people paid $400 for. It gives you a lot better resolution and in the pictures. Um, gives you some features I'm not even really aware of, something about map tech, max texture size. You can get... Um, image overlays that are more than the max texture size. Don't exactly know what that means, but I guess if you're used to using Google, Google Earth a lot and you want the extra features of Google Earth Pro, uh, one warning, I've heard people say that as they've tried to sign up for the Google Earth Pro that the uh, traffic is so heavy right now that sometimes they get errors on the page, so you may have to try several times to be able to get your licensing key. But um, And there's also, with the Google Earth Pro, I guess you can... Uh, uh, it says, along with advanced tools, they help you measure 3D buildings, print high-resolution images for presentations or reports, and record HD movies of your virtual flights around the world. So um, it does give you quite a few new sets of features. I think you probably have to have a, a pretty much newer machine to do this because it seems like it would take a lot of rendering power. But, hey, um, that's kind of cool. So you Google Earth Pro, you can get it for free. Anyway, I'm going to leave this um, as a kind of short report because it's Super Bowl weekend, and I hope if you uh, enjoy the Super Bowl, I hope you have a good time watching it, and if you have something else to do this weekend, just have a good weekend. So I will catch you guys next week.